Web Engineering, Wally Fono Tools. And uh, we have seminar today more technical than practical. That was advice because the practical, how to do it by ear, they is in room 9022. Six seminars, two per day. Today is theoretical and practical, but mostly it will be theoretical or I'll be showing stuff that it's not on internet or not provided by other seminars speakers. And by the way, this is my, well, I don't know, fifth or sixth seminar every, every two, three years I am here. And uh, I have great experience. The 2002, my first European seminar was for German Analog Audio Association. And then I met over there Frank Schroeder from Schroeder Tonums, Helmut Brinkmann from Brinkmann Turntables, Dr. Feichert. Uh, he was working at the time for Shoy. Now he's his own company. So then I, I, were, I was going over there almost every year. My schedule, in two and a half weeks, I'm going to Europe. I have seminar in Zurich, Switzerland, in Düsseldorf for German Analog Audio Association. Then third largest show in Poland. I'm originally from Poland. I have to t tell you some background. I came to United States in 78. I learned English from all of you guys, so if I make a mistake, that's your fault. I never took any classes in this country. I had only in high school uh, two hours a week English basic, like grammar and so. And uh, then uh, I was listening to Radio Luxembourg because top 20 on Sunday night, that was a big issue for all young people behind Iron Curtain. So, and La Radio Luxembourg, probably you don't know what is that. It was stationed for American troops in Europe. Music, rock and roll, pop music all the time. Are you recording? Thank you very much. So, uh, we will start quick because I have only one hour, but we still have time over there on the table for practical answering questions because I want to pass to you as maximum as possible. So, this was introduction. Stylus, where is the stylus? We don't know. Like I said, stylus is right here. After cleaning, dry and wet, that's the stylus. And it's a gigger stylus, which is simulating cutter stylus. It's a different than most elliptical styluses. And gigger stylus looks like that. What I am using, I'm not using anymore USB microscope. I'm using optical microscope with 10 mega camera attached today, in industrial camera, and special micrometer adjustment. The biggest problem is always to find the stylus because it, this is very high magnification. It's over 1,000 X. So this is Giga stylus, and you can, can you see cursor? Uh, you can see cursor. So the contact line is right here. It's not in the middle. Somebody called me and he said, Wally, the stylus rake angle is very, very high, over 110 degrees, because he was measuring bisectional, bisec, bisectional, that's the correct word, bisectional line. So the contact line is right here. Anyway, we start from the basics. I'll be, I'll be speeding, and if we have time, because I prepared last night a lot of pictures, and okay. And they are mixed, I'll be looking for, for them. So, this is the basic turntable ge geometry. Arm pivot point is right here. And I know that protractors, like I have something to show later, Fikert and uh, what is smart protractor, they rely on pinpoint from the top to the pivot. And if you have a tone arm that the pivot is not very easy to determine, what I am suggesting, and that's what I am doing, you put a masking tape here, the yellowish or piece of masking tape. And to your best justification, take lead pencil and make a dot. And then I will not be using this, but 
then you put some reference point and uh, rotate tonum. If the point is going around circle, it's not pivot. When point is on top of the pivot, should stay stationary. That's the that's the freebie. That's what I do. So we have pivot. When you have tonum installed by factory or by somebody, you have to measure pivot to spindle. And uh, do we have some CD boxes with, in the bags? You have it? Oh, by the way, gentlemen, I got yesterday email from United Nations from New York that it will be observer sent by United Nations, analog expert who occasionally is writing for stereophile analog corner, and his initials are MF. So if you see somebody with MF, that's him. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Wally. Maybe him. So, and uh, this is very free, unofficial seminar. I asked Michael yesterday, what would you suggest? Technical, practical, because practical, you can get, I'm not advertising. DVD is excellent, and you have all the tips how to use it. Take off your tie, okay? Have a schnapps. Uh, no? Oh, don't have a schnapps. Okay. So, I'll, like I said, I'll be providing something more than it is on internet and so. This is tonum geometry. So we have pivot, we have spindle, we have pivot to spindle, and if you have tonum installed, we don't have boxes. Michael, do you have maybe CD boxes in your bag? Uh, one. One, okay. So, I'll just explain. What you take the Chinese ruler, $195, $95, and you, you put it here, and you have to support by stack of CD boxes. No, don't bother. Okay? Now, there is advice, that's mine. If you are very worried about digititis, it means that digits from the CDs will penetrate your platter. <laughs> I'm suggesting remove CDs from the box and use only boxes. So, you have to measure pivot to spindle to check if this is related to nominal effective length. And effective length is from the stylus position. Okay, effective length is not very easy. It's yellow. Do you see yellow? Yeah, we see. So, when stylus is, a cartridge is installed in the middle of sluts, and stylus has distance between screws and uh, stylus and screws, nominal, it means 3 eighths of an inch, 9.52 millimeter, then we are getting nominal effective length. But having sluts plus minus 6 millimeters, that's the room to correct if your arm is not properly installed for that tonum effective length. And for example, gram tonums are specified 235. And the overhang, which is distance here, overhang, if you theoretically, hypothetically theoretically, put your stylus over the spindle, that's the distance from center of the spindle to the stylus. So summarizing, effective length minus overhang or minus pivot to spindle will give you either value. And most popular so far, 239 millimeters, which is Cobra, I was on the design team, all uh, Regas, Shredder, and 239. Of overhang is 17.3, and pivot to spindle is 221.7. So those three numbers correspond to each other. Then <coughs> there is an offset angle, okay? Because stylus and head shell. Oh, by the way, some people, when I'm uh, uh, asking them to measure, there is a mystery with a VPI JMW 
10.5 is 10.5. 10 inches is 254 millimeters, and a half is 12.7, let's say 13. So it should make 267, right? 254 plus 13. I'm 72 years old, but I still do mathematics to 10, to 100, easy. So what I am advising people, if you have pivot, counterweight, and tonum, and J-shape, let's say J-shape, okay? And then we have head show. I am following my advice to do it technical, not very to show you. I am telling, take the ruler, Chinese ruler is fine. Make those points and measure directly four dimensions. That will be L1, two, three, four. One guy said, Wally, should I use thread and follow the tube? I said, no, 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 no. You just go straight. And then you add all those together, divided by four, you will get the distance here. And that's what will be your distance to the center of cartridge. And then we have here 9.5 millimeters, because here it's a little angled, I am adding nine, and that's your L effective. And believe me, 10.5 was 267 long time ago. Then it was 271, and now 275, and 277, and back to 272. I don't know why. I don't call VPI. I'm just telling you, if you wanna make Wally tractor, not necessarily mine, but copy. Why do you add nine, I don't understand. That's for stylus. Because that, Michael, good question. One again. If we find this, and we have here screws, okay, and cartridge is underneath, so here is stylus. That's the nine millimeters. No, no, no. It's from seven to eleven. That's why we have slots. But I'm going by nominal. So all bands, boom, clear audio lately. 9.5, but it used to be one and hole 12 millimeters. Then he added, as you remember, extra set of holes to make it nine and a half. So then we have L effective. My having L effective, there are formulas, blah, 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 for 239 equals 17.3 plus 221.7. Okay, that's the pivot to spindle, and this is overhang. And you add them up, and that's the effect. That's what people don't understand. That you add the effect of the, the, the pivot spindle plus the overhang yes. is the effect of one. That's here. Once again, okay? We have spindle, pivot to spindle. We have overhang, and then we have yellow, where is stylus. We have effective length here. Go ahead. You can interrupt any time. The microphone? No, no, you're saying that every time on all these tone arms, the, the head shell, the center of the head shell and the groove is supposed to be lined up with the spindle. I don't get it. Please explain it better. Your slots on the, yes. on the cartridge head shell. Yes. The center of that. Center. This point. That point. There's a red point between. You're saying that lines up on the spindle. No. No, no. Uh, okay. No. Because that's what you're measuring. But look, if we have here 17.3, the spindle will be, here we have nine only. Okay, so we have eight millimeter spindle somewhere here. I'm glad that you asked that question. And I'm glad that Michael said, go technical. Don't assume that everything is fine. The tone arms are installed badly by manufacturers. That's why I'm saying, use CD boxes without CDs to avoid digititis. Measure, call me. And we will, but you have to, you have to know for your tone arm, still, I don't trust. Like, make L1, 2, 3, 4. It's very easy. Straight, ruler, boom. The point, the closest point of slot, on my website I'm showing screws, but doesn't matter. Here is the phone. 
And God told me to help all those goofy people who play vinyl. I said, God, I'm also goofy. That you have better communication. Goofy to goofy, it's easy to talk. It's really more important for someone who buys a turntable where the, the, it's being drilled out by a dealer or you're buying it used. I and mean, if you buy a Riga or a VPI where they drill it most of the time, yes. 99% of it, they're going to have drilled it correctly. Correctly. But we had subject with the triplanner, and you were in Scandinavia. That another That's another story. And Michael calls me from Scandinavia, and we are going through numbers. And so they made another one, boom, screwed up. The jig. Gentlemen, feel free to interrupt to say, this is like family. Goofy people who play vinyl, OK? Wonderful. Any questions to that, maybe? So, so, so if you perform this nominal measurement, because the 9 millimeters is nominal. Nominal. What does that tell you? So in other words, you've got an average, but that's not your exact arm. OK. Going back to, let's say, this one. If you have 221.7 pivot to spindle for that Rega or Cobra or VPI or whatever, your cartridge is 7.5 millimeters. Then, when you have arc, when you have that arc, and you need a gauge to, to get it, then you need a gauge to. You need a, you need something, and I'm not I'm not promoting or disqualifying any. Every protractor is fine, but. Overhang is most critical parameter in arm geometry, and I'll show you results. I'll show you results on the on the chart. Why overhang is so critical? Is, is there any way to get closer on the nine component? We can get very close on the you know on the first measure. Watch nine, again. The, maybe the nine maybe. in your example is nominal. That's right. If, if we know if we know pivot to spindle, okay. Of your, of your setup, then I can calculate from spreadsheet what is overhang for that. And then we know what is effective length. Then we know L234, and I can do it easy. Do we have enough room in slots to install 7 millimeter cartridge or 11 millimeter cartridge? If not, it happened. On VPI, when they that was the, the boomerang support was rotating. I don't know if it's still possible to rotate, to change pivot to spindle. Some people, I remember, they reported for, to me that Graham Tonam and Van den Hull cartridge, they don't work. Sure, Van den Hull was 11 millimeters. Bob Graham, he, he designed for 235, and the cartridge was installed in the back of slots. And the guy is moving, 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 and he said, I still don't have right overhang on the, on the arc. Yes, so you have to move arm away. So you're not suggesting they're trying to measure? No, 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 no. You need, you need an arc. And I'm not saying that you need Wally tractor, but... Okay, this is freebie, two point. And you can spend, instead of spending to listen music, you can spend half day to, to figure out how to do it. Now, there is, a, there is a copy printed of Wally Tractor with the arc. And that you can go on internet, find some uh, software, or, and print it. The problem is with the hole. When I started to make Wally Tractors, I made very nice very nice arcs, everything, the whole geometry. And then I drill the hole. And I'm drilling, and I'm a mechanical engineer with master's degree, and I know what happened. I see the drill bit is, is, is traveling. So I said, oh, <laughs> the overhang is supposed to be with plus minus 0.1 millimeter. And my drill bit and mirror is traveling. So what I'm doing, there is no secret. I'm drilling, I have very precise drill bit which is just a few thousands of an inch larger than spindle. I'm drilling hole first, and then I have tooling that insert precisely. And that insert center point is my reference. So all the lines are done in reference to the center point of the pre-drilled hole. People, some people, they, they just punch the hole with the puncher, and hole is 
way too big and then it's moving. Remember, overhang is most important and we'll get to that. I can, yeah, don't scratch, fingerprints are fine, I have special liquid to clean. Wally, another a quick tip, after you print it, use that same 99 cent Chinese ruler and verify that it's to scale because you don't trust your... Uh, you're printing the wrong yes. side. Yes. There, are, there are some, there are some scales on the side in the, that you know you can compare and blah. blah. It takes a 10 seconds and yes. Check. Yes. You can. You have to check, and if it's clear and with millimeters, whatever you do to your best is fine. Just do it, like Nike says. Just do it. Okay. You should explain why you, the overhang is important. What, what you're trying to achieve. Just, that's, I have it here, but after connecting to projector, the sequence is, is wrong. And I have to find, I'll be showing, I'll be showing whatever I have, whatever I'll find. Okay, let's do this one. Okay. <clears throat> now you, should, you should show that and then correlate it with the marks on your, on your. I, I will, I will, but. It's my pictures I prepared until midnight last night, they are mixed. And I have, so whatever I'll find, I'll explain what is here. This is a tracking distortions with a, uh, first one is hidden, but blue is Lovgren. Red one, Lovgren A, Lovgren B, terminology. I just learned from very, very um, people dedicated to Ptolemy geometry. Lovgren was Swedish mathematician. In 1937, he developed formulas. And then he developed Lovgren A alignment and Lovgren B. Stevenson was in, I think, late 50s, early 60s. But Mr. Berwald, without knowing Lovgren, publication which was in Swedish language. Mr. Berwald, American mathematician in 1942, he developed formula and which is exactly giving the same results like Lovgren A, Berwald and Lovgren A. But now, Europeans, this is European. Uh, I was using European calculator, very, very, very nice. So I can put two, three, four graphs. So Lovgren A or Berwald is blue. And we have 121 millimeter null point. We have 66 millimeter null point. And we have distortions coming from horizontal misalignment. Lovgren B, <coughs> that's what Michael and I will prefer. Why? Because majority of records, they don't go below 68, 69 millimeters. That's why we prefer. And look. Red is Lovgren B, which gives a little higher distortions at the beginning, but then in the middle and at the end, it's lower than blue. And Stevenson, he wanted a null point at 60 millimeters or 60 something point. Look, wherever is the highest modulation amplitude at the end of record, I don't know who will be using Stevenson. And he was very educated. I, I've seen his paper. Very, very high level of mathematics and geometry. So, any questions to that? British Decker. Decker, it's not, that's the? No, the, the Stevenson was, was tailored for British Decker. Oh, I see, got it. Yeah. I didn't pay any, any attention. So, 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 distortion on that wasn't electronic distortion, right? It was deviation from? That's a calculated distortions coming from misalignment, angular misalignment of the cantilever stylus to the original tangential recording. Where we were? We're here. Now let's see what do we have here. Yes. One time Michael and I will work on comparison because people were obsessed that the fashion for longer tonums is coming. The same like single-ended was coming, coming. Sounds better. Oh, 12 inch, 12 inch works on your brain because when you see longer arm, sounds better. Here we have, this is degree. So 
This be beginning of the record, that's 229 millimeters, and a little less for 12 inch. The same is here. The highest, the highest misalignment beside 121 and 66 null points is like, like 89 millimeters. So, <clears throat> if somebody wants those, send me email. I'll, I'll, this is everything documented. I prepare in Minneapolis and yesterday I was selecting and so. Now, next one will be, that's related to previous picture. Those are distortions in percentage. The previous was, just a second. There's the angular in degrees. Here is, the, they are distortions. Yes, there is advantage, there is advantage, but I'll show you something that you will be shocked. Because here, look, even Berwald, uh, sorry, 229 millimeters, which is shortest tone arm on the market, it's like 0.65% coming from misalignment. It's from mathematics. Okay. Okay, that was this one. Sorry for that mixing. And I, we got it. Read on the top. 267, which is 10.5 VPI. And we have green is overhang minus one millimeter then calculated. Look what happened. This is VPI red, and red is uh, 121 and 66. Gosh, time is flying. And now, by mistake, I have one millimeter. Too short. Look what happened with the green. Wherever is the most critical, that's what people, when people hear mistracking at the end of record, they think that this is misalignment. No. It's, it was either recorded by cutter. When the cutter stylus go closer and closer to the center, amplitude is larger because linear velocity is slower, shorter radius. Michael, this is, I, I never done it. It's done for this seminar, comparison. When overhead, that's why I'm, I am expressing more and more overhang that's what it is if you have linear tracking tonarm and you feel you have three degrees misalignment it travels all over and if you if you align with the cartridge body and most cartridges don't have body now you have to align with the cantilever this is very eye-opening what's going on if you have wrong that's one millimeter off shorter one millimeter. And now, when you have this, I have some, I have some experience, but we have that representative from United Nations, and he has great experience. Michael, can you? You, you don't have to put together, but it, it's up to you. You can explain how to use it. Well, this, this gauge has multiple alignment curves possible. You can, you can do Lockin A, bare wall, IBC. I'm not even going to explain all these things. Yeah, the two minutes, Michael. Yeah, Lockin A, Lockin B. Uh, there's one called Unidin, which they have developed. With I'll show it. Controversy. And what you do with this gauge is, is um, <coughs> you set it up so that... On the plot, there's well, I'm going to take it apart now, but... You. This is Just explain in short words yeah. that you have to use the pin. Yeah, you have to make sure that your pivot to spindle distance is correct and you use this pin. And this is critical because a lot of, of arms don't let you see where the pivot point is on the arm. So they have this set of gauges here. It looks like, like a submarine. So you can look from on top and get it exactly in the center where it is and make sure your pivot to spindle distance is correct. And then you set the stylus tip you set it to go into the little divot in the particular curve you're using, and then you look with a microscope with a with a, a little eyepiece that goes up in here, and you set it so it's exactly in the little point, and then you've got the overhang exactly correct. It's a one-point overhang setting. 
and some people don't like that because if it's wrong, you don't have confirmation. You don't have, a, you don't have confirmation by, by the second null point. In other words, you're using one of those two points. The, the little dimple is in one of those two points. Yes. And it's better to have two points unless you're exactly sure that you've got this exactly correct. That's the same thing as SME does. They've got a single point setup. Right. They have a single point setup, and, and that's, why, that's why I like Wally's gate because the, you actually see the arc. When I do these seminars, I, I show people that the stylus is in the arc the whole way across. So it, the stylus is traveling the correct arc across the surface of the record. And then you know your overhang is correct because he's calculated the arc for your particular pivot to spindle distance. Then you set the null points. And that, in this, you that could be done on paper. Or you can do it on paper. I'll pass it, but be careful, don't... Like Project <laughs> gives you, and Riga gives don't you a piece of paper to do it, but Riga's is the Stevenson setup, yes. which I, I, you know, I think it was done for classical music, so there's right. less distortion of yeah. the inner grooves, but it, I think it doesn't make any sense, because as you can see, there's more distortion where you play most of the music, so I wouldn't use that piece of paper. But a piece of paper will work if, if it's... It's better than, better than two-point. Go ahead, please. Just a quick question. What was the Denison set up for? Denison? It's the, it, that, this one and Fikert, it's a based on Denison principle. It's, 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 it's the same practically. Which curve? Pardon me? Berwald. Berwald, Lovgren A. And this one is, there was freebie, I don't know where I pick it up, here or maybe Düsseldorf. Yeah, you can put together. I'll put it back. I like this gauge, but only if you are exactly sure exactly that you've sure. got this point on the pivot point. And if your arm doesn't allow you to know that exactly, you're, this is an approximation. That's the problem. That's, you know, you never know if your pin, like new gram, it has a dome. And it, origin life, that's also. I, I think every toner manufacturer should put a point where the pivot point is yes. on top, so that you can yeah. do an alignment using whatever tool yes. you want. It's up to you to go fight the fight to tell these guys to do that. <laughs> Michael, if you take a piece of mainframe and put on top of the arm, you have a point on that, around a point on that, you can move the arm and watch that. Yeah, this? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right, you have to make, make sure it doesn't move. Yeah. yeah, but you can put a piece of mainframe on top of the arm. Any questions to? Okay, Michael, did I send you a long time ago? A year ago, I have nothing against Roy Gregory seminars. It's fine, it's educational. You do it by ear, you do by that. But he was presenting last year, alignment, Unidin comparison. Which, which is on this, uh, it's one of the options here. You like it? You, you, okay, what was the demonstration? There were two tone arms with the same cartridge model, but not the same cartridge. It was whatever, orthophone something, this and that. One was installed in Tonarm, aligned with Lovgren A, the other one aligned with Unidin. And Unidin is brown, and I got, I got this drawing from them. So look, the brown is, and, and Lovgren, just a second. Okay, we have it here. Unidin is light brown. And look, they were playing music between 100 millimeters and 85. And then blue was slightly higher distortions. Light brown, lower. But if we take Lovgren B, Lovgren B is always better than Unidin up to somewhere here, that doesn't matter. But look, at the end of record, Lovgren B, it's much lower. And below 80 millimeters, that's what, where it counts. Because then it's very audible. You remember, amplitude is much higher. Modulation deeper. Say it out loud, like it, was a, it was a fudge test. It was a fudge demonstration. But, okay. <laughs> I'll say it if you want. They were playing the part of the little part no, of the no. where, where the unit is please, better, but please stimulate me because I'm hesitant. I don't want to criticize. I want you to. Not, why not? Okay. 
I have, I have uh, permission to go to one o'clock to that alignment by ear under one condition that I will not say a word. And I promise. That's why I won't go. <laughs> Michael said, I'm not going. Sure, there is no need. It is difference in sound, whatever they demonstrate. It was the difference in sound between two tonums, the same model cartridge. But if you don't know what is stylus rake angle, and stylus rake angle for the same cartridge model, one piece, another piece, another piece, could be a few degrees different. And another parameter, like I expressed, overhang is very critical, starting. The same is stylus rake angle. In my opinion, and observer from United Nations confirms, it is most important. If you have stylus rake angle not matched to original cutting, which is 92 degrees for 80% of records ever produced, and it is documented, it's not just guesswork, it is documented. What we do, we set up 92 and leave it. If you want to play a little for each record to sound better, it's like bending that plastic mirror to have your face best looking. But if you adjust for one face, the other face looks ugly. And people are saying, Wally, I adjusted geometry for one record which was sounding very bad and now sounds great. But good records, they don't sound good as you. <laughs> you damn idiot. <laughs> I didn't say that. So. Now you see, they were, they were playing tricks, but if it's, if it's not known what is stylus rake angle, maybe that even Unidin had better stylus rake angle, more closer or closer to, I don't like to cheat myself. Say, well, can I point out something about the stylus rake angle? I don't hear you, sorry, sir. Uh, can I point out something about the stylus rake angle? Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming to that. And, 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 and they will be, okay, I want to go through all the pictures, okay? Quick, so we are done with that. Okay. Stylus rake angle. Okay, let's see, because it's masked. Okie dokie. Lyra Etna, okay. Okay. This, this is done. I can certainly hear myself now. Okay. This is taken picture I don't by with USB. I don't point fingers who do it, but that's the limitation of USB USB. And you can see stylus rake angle. Stylus rake angle is not angle between record and bisecting line in the middle of the shank because the the contact line is right here. I think that we'll go through to this very quick. You see, this is very expensive cartridge prototype, but stylus rake angle is 99 degrees. And uh, it is, I'll, I'll show you how it's calculated. Uh, Wally? Yes. Uh, the thing I was going to point out is that uh, from a mastering point of view, when, when you're cutting the record, uh, you, your needle only lasts about 10 hours. And so it has to be replaced. Turn it off. Turn it off. Just. Turn it off. But short. I have 20 minutes for everything. Okay. Cutting stylus has to be replaced drop. every 10 hours. All right. Some of you may know this, but some of you don't. But uh, we run a small LP mastering operation through Atmosphere Music Systems. Uh, so I'll just leave that there. The stylus rake angle is um, is not set on the cutter head. Uh, every needle that you get is a little bit different, and the proof of this is when you when you get done with the cutting stylus after about 10 hours, you have to replace it. So you have to take it out, and you know they're ruby or sapphire or whatever. And they're machined in a certain way, so they'll only go into the cutter head in a certain way. You drop it in, set it, and then you have to go through the whole process of making that stylus. What's your point? The different stylus? They're all different. They're okay. They're all over 90, though. They're all have to be over 90, otherwise you over can't. Over 90 because they're, they're, they're over 90. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But beyond that, you can't count on it. 
Because Fine. We, we can put them in the same way and they won't. I agree. Right. We, Michael and I, we are using article done yeah. scientifically yeah. by educated people. They do res they did research. We take 92 as a 80 percent average. average. 80 percent of records. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's 80 percent. That's what they say. I'm repeating whatever they spend a lot of time. They, whatever you say, I, I agree. You are saying the truth. I have to believe them, too. Okay. Otherwise, we'll, we'll never... I, I, I'll just put it this way. That's, that's really 80% is Fine. being optimistic. Fine. Okay. I say play CDs if you want it to be perfect. <laughs> yes. Now, this is, this is the typical optimum, kind of optimum. And uh, it is 92. What we do, there is a special formula. It's very simple. You measure slope of this because the stylus uh, contact line is exactly bisecting in the middle of the front edge and back edge. When you say 92 degrees, 160, we know vertical is 90 degrees. Are we talking about, in other words, 8 degrees or 2 to 6 degrees off? You really have to show them what these people don't know what, yes. what, what is your measure. I mean, you're, you're, or you just Between horizontal and contact line. It's 2 degrees above per beyond perpendicularity. This is 90. Now, look, this is formula. I'm just speeding. I have 15 minutes only. And I want to show you at least all my pictures I prepared. Now, this is micro ridge. And micro ridge has very special uh, shape. It has ridge here with the, I, I owe you something very important, which is not the if we have stylus, OK, and contact line is here, there is a R, and here is the groove. R of the stylus, R, is that one from front view. And lately, most popular is 30, 30 micrometers. Radius, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Minor R is right here on this part of contact in horizontal plane. This one is in vertical. So when somebody is specifying 100 and 6, that 100, it means very, very close to straight line almost. And very critical stylus rake angle. Very, very critical. If you have spherical stylus, conical spherical, there is no RR, it's only one R, because it's a sphere. OK, let's go next one. This stylus from the front, that's micro ridge in simulated groove. It's not worn out stylus. It is ground by Namiki like that. And you can see the ridge. This is by Zeiss microscope I am using with the 10 mega camera and special micrometer adjustment by Leica. Another, another problem Michael published already, Zenith stylus. This is from the bottom. And no, I'll be going even video with this when stylus goes down and so what happens. But that's how stylus is installed. And you can do it only. It's not very clear picture because focusing is not easy. You, you focus on this, and then it's a different distance. But you can see the shape of it's supposed to be rectangular. It's screwed up already. And that means that setting your, your, uh, your zenith angle <laughs> with a cantilever, which is what we all do, is not necessarily correct because I don't know how the stylus is. You got the point? Yeah. I tell you, when you will go home, forget whatever Wally said. Just put your music and listen. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Australia three years ago, and I showed all this stuff, the guy sent me, Wally, I don't know if I ever enjoy music like before your seminar. Because I, when I put record stylus in the groove, I see everything is wrong. Yes, sir. I have a question, Wally. How practical all these angles are to me? I cannot even see the down tip, you know, on the yes. end of the ruby cantilever. I mean, yes, I, I know. What, 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 what do I do? And these measurements, all I can tell from all these measurements, if my 
arm is mounted properly or not. And if you not, what point. do I want to do? You I cannot change point. the hole and the movement on you can you can set your arm right, you set your arm hang correctly with the right gauge, and you can set your zenith angle correctly with the right gauge, and, and yeah. even with the digital camera, you can get yes. close enough to see whether your cantilever has been and your stylus has been incorrectly manufactured in the in the cantilever, and it's so far off that you'll never get your stylus right angle mm -hmm. over 90 degrees. That much you can see, okay. even with a cheap macro lens on a. We will discuss, gentlemen, I want to go through my pictures and we'll go over there because they will kick us out in 10 minutes. The, remember, horizontal geometry relates to cantilever, tone arm, and location in horizontal plane. So it relates combination from stylus to pivot. Vertical geometry relates only to the cantilever stylus. Okay? And... Some manufacturers, they specify VTA as an angle of the cantilever, but it depends how tall is stylus, how it's installed. The reel, here is for pictorial reason, the contact line is way, way too high. It's uh, on very bottom of the tip. So that line, dotted line, should be from the tip of stylus, and that's the vertical tracking angle. Stylus lake angle is shown here as a 90 degrees. That's what it is. Somebody asked me a question about this, two degrees or 92. Depends how you measure. So here is 90 degrees and stylus should be slightly over. That shows to the shank, but here, what I'm doing, very sophisticated computerized system. I'm playing thousand cycles and it's connected directly to my Clio box, no phono section. And output is minus 72 degrees, 1,000 cycles. Second harmonic is 1, 2, 3, just 30 dB lower. And 30, 40 dB lower is 1%. So here we have about 2% second harmonic. And that cartridge sounding is sounding fabulous. Why? Because third, fourth, and fifth, third and fifth are very, very low. They are over 25 dB lower than second. And that test, I have two identical cartridges, very expensive. Don't want to say which ones. One has Giger stylus, the other one has elliptical, multi-elliptical line contact. And they have different spectrum of harmonics. And the multi-elliptical sounds better than Giger for ears. Giger sounds closer to digital. Cartridge four, okay, that was the same. Cartridge three, you see, the third, fourth, fifth, different spectrum. Stylus geometry, style, style. Okay, here is from the magazine, that publishing. When cutter is cutting groove, it's going like that. When you have spherical stylus, even mono, the, the stylus goes up and down, depends on location. Now, I want to show you. This is Shibata, and what happened here? I put, I made aluminum mirror, polished, and I dropped straight, and look what happened. When you are dropping stylus on them, it goes forward, engraving. So somebody who is using this test for uh, fundamental resonance measurements, it's wrong. He doesn't consider that friction between stylus. Details later, okay? And this one is different light. This is piece of art. Okay. Cartridge. This one, I'm playing pink noise connected to my test system and it shows you frequency response. I don't know how accurate it is because it depends on record recorded with pink noise, but if I play the same pink noise with one cartridge, another one, I can see the difference in frequency response. It's instantaneous. You don't have to sweep. It shows you right away. Okay, I want to select. Michael, your turn. Well, this was a... Uh, I got it from you. I uh, don't want to say anything. And I, I didn't re I refused to review this cartridge. I sent it back. This was with the arm parallel to the record surface because that's 
what Riga gives you. You can't adjust BTA, SRA, and Riga. So he would hope that they would at least give you a stylus on a cartridge that they've looked at and inspected at at least 90 degrees. But this is, this is why it's good to have a microscope, so you can see what you paid for. It was 83 degrees. You'd have to raise that arm so high to get even 90 degrees that it's a defective cartridge. Defective cartridge. And you see, I'm not pumping him up, but honestly, of reviewer, when something is wrong, don't waste time. Don't kick in the groin. How could you set that by ear? You could never get it right. That's right. That's the point. If you don't know where is your starting point, don't play with ear adjustment. The question, if you, are, if you start arguing with the cartridge manufacturer, those numbers that you just talked about, 92 degrees, that of course is based on you know, your experience and somebody investigating. But those numbers will never show up in the specification of the cartridge. So what are, what are you claiming with the manufacturer? They should, if you spend a lot of money on the cartridge, these should all be inspected and qc so that when the arm is parallel to the record surface, it's at least 90 degrees. Because, you know, yes. Ralph, Ralph is right, it can't be exact. But you know what? No. Barrowald and Lofgren measurements are based upon the starting point and end point of, of the record groove being standardized, which they're not. So every measurement in this whole process is a compromise to some degree. So you have to understand that. But if the stylus rake angle is 86 degrees or 83 degrees out of the box with parallel, you'll never get it right. That should go back. If you spend $5,000 on a cartridge, maybe you should spend $200 on a microscope or learn how to use it so you can inspect what you've purchased to see whether it's garbage. That's Conversely, uh, you know, I do a lot of alignments uh, and so forth, and you wrote in the past about, you know, clear audio. Gosh, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't cut the, you know, you really have to lower the arm to, because they've got their SRA so high. Um, and then, conversely, I did an EMT recently, where you really had to raise the arm a lot to get it, you know, I did one of those too. get it in the range. And that's, so what do you think? Practical tip. Even this, you can buy on eBay, made in China, $45 USB microscope. Yeah. And it, it depends on your practice and skills. And Michael started to use it with a broomstick tool, tripod, supported, and he took pictures. Now he's better. Anything what you do, start from that one. This is not very, like I am using size microscope, still informative. And you see, you, you, can, you can see what is the range. Is it 85 or 97, or you are close to 90 or 93. And then, then when you have it, I'm still preferring to keep the torn arm parallel to there and put shims yeah. in the cartridge. Okay. Use tone arm VTA adjustment for sound bedding. Right. Now, for 239 millimeters, you remember it was published many times. If the tone arm is 239 millimeters, and here is the stylus, 239, in order to change one degree, you need about four millimeters up or down. So you keep parallel, and that's your reference, okay? The, 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 the result is, make a note, it's 239 divided by 57.3 gives you uh, amount of millimeters per one degree. That's, that's high school geometry. It's a, but I keep it parallel, and then if, if you have bad, and you cannot return, you are stuck with the cartridge. Then you can, you can, here is the point, you can put metal even for, for testing yeah. sounding. Take aluminum foil from the kitchen and few, few layers yeah. and put it stick here. Tilt it this way or that way. I have a question. So, so I have this guy with the EMT cartridge and he's got his tongue. I'll only take it um, <laughs> But anyway. Uh, Quick, so please. we really tried to raise the arm, et cetera, and my concern is that when you get that pivot, you know, that, that pivot so high, all of a sudden your azimuth and so forth are going to be affected as you go across the arm. 
or across the river. Do you agree with that, or you know, should you shim the cartridge instead to achieve that? Depends. If you have to go really high up, yeah, yeah, then you should. You should. That, that was my point, and the oh. and the arm manufacturer argued against, against, against that and said it wouldn't make any difference. I'm done. Okay, Michael was ready to send Lyra to Retip, and he sent to me. I took the size microscope, and look, this is one of the best pictures. What, what is here? This is the flatness worn out. This is flatness. Okay? Here is the formula. I can email to you those pictures if you are interested. No problem. But that's what it show. It confirms that contact line is bisecting front and back edge. Now, worn, dead, very worn. This is the very first one, five, six years. And now, when you, when you have expensive stereo, right, and uh, you get divorced, not you, but somebody, and uh, the wife will, ex-wife will take all your equipment because she knows when you light even 50%, it's still expensive. She will give you, leave all the records. What you can do, you can just, <laughs> and then another one, uh, in, 50s. This is American story from Japan. I got it from Japanese guy. Japanese ask Americans to compensate that atomic bombs. Hey, send to us those wonderful American cars. But remember, we drive on the left side, so steering wheel should be on the right side. Americans send them 10, 20 cars and nothing. No fax, no nothing. So they they asking, how do you like cars? Japanese say back. We love your cars, but we have very short legs. It's very difficult to reach pedals on the left side. Now, they, were, they, were, they like very... This picture is Klipschhorn, made in Japan. And the name model is, listen to mother-in-law, you damn guy. This is the largest horn ever produced. Gentlemen, we'll move to the table over there because I think that I have to leave. Just a second, maybe one, some pictures that I have, I have plenty of. Oh, one here. This is on my website. If you have 14 units, compliance units, cartridge, and your tone arm with the cartridge is 28, you have eight hertz resonance. We can talk about woe and flutter and so. Sorry, guys. Go to Marjor Mar Marjorie and tell her next year. Next year we want a two hours, and then the representative from United Nations will be assisting me. Michael, thank you very much. No, the the teamwork. Are you happy? I hope so. I'll be at the table, and we can. We I can answer questions.